So, today we deal with what many people consider to be the children's commandments. And so, maybe in your mind, you've sat back and said, okay, Brian talked to the kids, told them to honor mom and dad, obey mom and dad, respect mom and dad. Those who needed to get the message got the message. Now we can say amen and go home because it's the children's command. Many times we, we believe that. Uh, many times we believe that this commandment was given just for kids to understand that they need to obey their parents. Let me ask you this. How many of us as parents have ever quoted that commandment to our kids? Oh, come on. Raise your hand. You know at some point when your kid was disobedient, you, you said, well, the Bible says you got to honor your parents. And we use that as part of our parental toolkit. It's in there, so whenever we need it, we take it out. Whether it's Exodus chapter 20 or whether it's Ephesians chapter 6, we pull that out whenever necessary. But here's what I want all of us to catch today. This commandment is not just for kids. The expiration date on this commandment does not expire when all of a sudden we turn 18 years old or all of a sudden when we move out of the house or all of a sudden when uh, we have our own job and we are on our own. This commandment is for every single one of us. As a matter of fact, I would go so far to say that this may be one of the most important 10 commandments. And so let's read it together. Would you read it together with me? And then we'll have a word of prayer and kind of dive in in the brief time that we have today. In Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, here's, what, here's the command that God gave the Israelites and to us there through Moses. Read it with me. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given or is giving you. Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you for uh, the sweetness of your spirit that we've been able to experience in this service. Lord, it's so much more enjoyable worshiping with family and, and people that we love and people that we care for. And we thank you so much for that. Lord, thank you for Mark and April, and, and Lord, thank you for the ministry that you've given them to us and the lives that have been touched. We thank you for that. Thank you for the boys and girls in our congregation. Thank you for the future that you're giving us through these kids. So Lord, I pray that you would help us to uh, take this verse and apply it to our own lives. If we have ears to hear, which we do, help us to hear that which the Holy Spirit of God is saying to us today. And we promise to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let me just share some practical applications for you today. How does this, the fifth command, apply to us? And so you have an outline in front of you. And by the way, adults, I encourage you to fill out your outline, but you're not gonna get candy at the end of the service, all right? Even though I would love to see your filled out outline, you're not going to get it. The first thing that I wrote in, uh, in my notes is this. The fifth commandment connects the first four commandments, which teach us how to love the Lord, which the last, or with the last five commandments, which teach us how to love our fellow man. So, so, so here's what I mean by that. A lot of words there, and you can see it up on the screen if you're filling out your outline. This command was not randomly placed as the fifth commandment. It's not like God just kind of took all 10 of them and told Moses, okay, put them in whatever order you want them in. The, this fifth commandment was, was, or the, was strategically placed here for a purpose. The, this fifth commandment connects the vertical commandments, and so the first four that we've seen so far that deal with our relationship with God, that we shouldn't have any other gods before the Lord, we should not have idols in our life, we should not take the Lord's name in vain, that the Sabbath day is his, it's not ours. Those commands that deal with our vertical relationship with him, this command connects those first four with the last five that relate to our relationship with one another. 
So in other words, the first four commands deal with our relationship with God. The last five deal with our relationship with each other, with with our fellow man. And this commandment connects them together. Uh, When you see pictures of uh, the Ten Commandments, you'll see them on basically two tablets. And, And many believe that this was the first commandment on the second tablet. The first four commandments on the first tablet dealt with our relationship with God. And this is the first commandment on the second tablet. And it connects them together. So, so what does that mean? Let me give you a very practical and yet difficult application, all right? So, so here's the next thing I wrote in my notes. You cannot honor your heavenly father if you do not honor your earthly parents. Let me let that sink in for just a second. You cannot honor your heavenly father if you do not honor your earthly parents. Now, that concept is easy for some of us, and it's more difficult for others of us. Here's what I mean. If you had a mom and dad or a mom or dad that loved you, that cared for you, that provided for you, that encouraged you, that motivated you, it is easy for us, or easier, it's never easy, but it's easier for us to obey and fulfill this commandment. But if your parents, your dad or your mom, abandoned you, if your dad or your mom or both didn't provide for you, if they didn't love you, and God forbid, if they abused you, this commandment is much more difficult. Does that make sense? And so if we had loving parents, man, it'd sit back and say, man, it's easy for me to honor my parents. I was blessed with with two loving parents that thankfully are are still alive today. They loved me. They cared for me. They gave me a great home. They provided for all of my needs, and they pointed me to Jesus Christ. It is not difficult for me to honor them, but I get it. Some of us here today didn't have that privilege. Some of us here today don't know mom and dad. Some of us here today don't have a good relationship with mom and dad. And you might sit back and say, wait a second, Brian, that's just not fair. It's easy for you to obey this command, but it's much more difficult for me. Here's something that I want you to catch in the passage. And this just isn't me. Catch it in the passage. There are no conditional clauses in this command. Did you catch that? There are no conditional clauses. Here's what God doesn't say. Honor your father and your mother if. If your mom and dad loved you and cared for them or for you, honor them. If your mom and dad loved Jesus, honor them. If your mom and dad provided for you, honor them. He doesn't say that. There are no conditional clauses in the command. The command very simply is this, honor your father and your mother. Here's the question, and I don't want to spend a lot of time here today, but I know some of you are thinking it. How can you honor a parent who has ignored you? How can you honor a parent who has abandoned you? How how in the world could you, can you honor a parent who has abused you? I get that. But, but, but catch this today. The answer is found not in the goodness, the transformation of your parents. The answer is found in the truth of the gospel. And I want you to catch this today. God has forgiven us not because we deserve to be forgiven. Don't raise your hand today. But is there anybody here today that deserves to be forgiven? Not a single one of us. And we have commended, or we have committed horrendous acts, unholy acts against a holy God. And God in his grace, God in his mercy reaches down to us and he extends forgiveness, love, care, compassion, acceptance. He extends all of that to us, not because of who we are, but because of who Jesus is. 
So this morning today, you're forgiven not because you deserve it. Today, you're accepted not because you deserve it. You are loved by God not because you deserve it. You were honored because of Jesus Christ, not because of, of the fact that you deserve it. We receive all of those things because of Jesus, simply because of Jesus. So today, we forgive our parents, not because they deserve to be forgiven, but because we are forgiven. We honor our parents, not because they deserve to be honored, but because God, through Jesus Christ, has honored us. It's so important for us to grasp that we cannot truly love, we cannot truly honor our heavenly father if we do not honor our earthly parents. You might sit back today and say, Brian, man, you have no idea. You have no idea what my mom and dad did to me. I don't. I don't. But Jesus does. Jesus understands that completely. And it's only through Jesus Christ that you and I are able to fulfill this command. Let me show you another thing quickly, and I've got I've to move quickly. Proper respect towards our fellow man begins at home. So, so in the next five commands, he's going to be talking about how we should treat each other. And so he begins with this one. I, I mean, if I asked you today, if I gave you a sheet of paper beforehand and said, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the Ten Commandments and I want you to list them in order of importance. All right, in your mind, I want you to list which ones you think are most important. We probably, somewhere on our list, would have listed the first four. And then we probably would have said, man, you know, that you shouldn't murder is pretty important, is it not? And that you shouldn't commit adultery is pretty important. And that command to not lie is pretty important. And we probably would have notched down on that list the command to honor our parents as not as important as some of the other commands. But it's interesting that this commandment comes before the command to not murder, the command to not commit adultery, the command to not lie, to not covet. Why is that? Because proper respect for one another begins at home. And the very foundation of our society is not the government, it's not the political party to which you and I belong. The very foundation of our society is the home. And when the home crumbles, the nation you know what's wrong, and, and I'm chasing a rabbit here, and I apologize. You know what's wrong with our country? The problem with our country is not the politicians that we have in office. The problem with our country is not the high amount of taxes that we pay. The problem with our country is not the problems that exist in our public school system or in our inner cities. The problem with our country is that our families are disintegrating. And God structured the society on the family. And so when he begins talking about our relationships with one another, he doesn't begin with external relationships. He begins with that relationship at home. And he says, this is foundational. Honor your father and your mother. So very important. Let me give you a second thing. I need to go a little quickly because we're going to have the Lord's Supper at the end. But the second truth that I listed is this, and it ties right in with what I just said. The fifth commandment demonstrates how important the family is to God. This commandment demonstrates how important the family is to God. From the, be from the very beginning, God's design for the family was built into the very fabric of creation. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24, right in the very beginning. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 
And then he talks about how they shall produce and they shall procreate and how they shall replenish and multiply and fill the earth. What is the foundation of our society in God's mind? It is the family. So I say also that the family demonstrates how God has ordered his world. No man is an island. No one lives and dies to himself or herself. All of us have authority structures to whom we are accountable. And those authority structures begin in the home. Let me me mention the third thing. The third thing, and we've already mentioned this today, but this fifth commandment is not just given to children but to adults as well. As as I mentioned, we kind of have the idea that this is a kid's command, and and we get that not only here from Exodus chapter 20, but also in Ephesians chapter 6, because here's the way the Apostle Paul rewords this command in Ephesians chapter 6. Notice, we'll put it up on the screen, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with promise. Verse 3. That it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. So we see, we see the Apostle Paul's rewording of that. And we sit back and say, okay, once again, this is a children's commandment. But it's not. Every single one of us are called to honor our parents. doesn't matter how old we are. We're called to honor our parents. I'm almost 55 years old. My parents are right at 80 years old. I'm called to honor my mom and dad, to respect my mom and dad. Even though I'm an old man, Mark is called to respect and honor me. How disrespectful that he would take my granddaughter and move to Grafton, Wisconsin. (laughs) Complete violation of this command. I'm kidding, kind of. (laughs) Let me give you 10 ways that you as an adult can honor your parents? Because you might sit back and say, okay, what does that mean? Does that mean that my dad picks up the phone and says, don't do this, and I have to obey him? No, quite frankly, you know, we reach a place in our life that, 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 that we don't live necessarily under the authority of our parents. It's not my job to necessarily tell Mark what to do and what not to do. But that doesn't mean he doesn't have a responsibility and obligation to honor me and me towards my parents. Let me give you a, 10 ways quickly that you can honor your parents and examine the relationship relationship that you have with your parents according to these according to these rules first of all respectfully disagree with them doesn't mean that you have to agree with everything they say but disagree with respect patiently listen to them i know sometimes our parents get on our nerves i know that that i get on mark's nerves sometimes patiently listen to them. Just as they were patient with you when you were a child, so you be patient with them as they grow older. Uh, Patiently listen to them. Freely forgive them. Regularly contact them. Faithfully visit them. Let me just pause for a second. Mark, are you writing these down? All right. (laughs) Faithfully visit them on a regular basis. Generously assist them. Consistently love them. Gently correct them. Fondly reminisce with them. You know, you know as we get older, you know, you know the most valuable thing that we have as we get older, apart from our relationship with the Lord, are the memories that we have. We, something came up yesterday, and we pulled out these pictures, Vicki and I did. And we're looking at pictures of Justin and Mark and Amber when they were little kids. Man, we just spent just a few moments reminiscing. That's rich. That's deep. When we're young, man, it's all about accomplishing. It's all about all of this. Realize that is extremely important to your parents. Fondly reminisce and steadfastly testify. What does that mean? Testify is the how God has used them in your life. So here's what God tells us as adults. Honor your father and your mother. 
Then he makes this, this statement. I don't want to pass by it. He says, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. What does that mean? In Exodus 20, this command was tied to the blessings of the land. And so God was telling the Israelites, listen, one of the, one of the main staples, one of the main foundational points of society is honoring your parents. If you want God's blessings upon you in the land that I am giving you, do not dishonor your parents. As a matter of fact, we won't hit it just a few chapters from now. It talks about in the nation of Israel that if they disrespected, if a child disrespected his or her parents and publicly rebelled, belt against them. Guess what they did to that individual? They took them outside the city and stoned them. Aren't you glad we don't do that today? Is there a couple of parents that would love to have that in your tool belt? All right? You either obey me or I'm taking you outside the city gates and we're going to stone you. All right? That's what was taking place. And so God says, listen, honoring your parents is so very important, not only to your longevity, but to the longevity of the Israelites as well. That promise, though, extends to believers today. It certainly doesn't mean that that we are going to gain the land of Israel, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you and I are going to live forever. But here's what I think it does mean. It means that our lifetime will be the full measure of what God intends for it to be. In other words... When we honor our parents, our life will not be cut short. Let me show you a fourth application. The fourth application is this. The fifth commandment was perfectly fulfilled by Jesus Christ. And I'm speaking at this point in relation to his earthly parents. Let me, give you, let me show you two verses that, that point this out. Luke chapter 2 and verse 51. We'll put it up on the screen. All right. Mary and Joseph had been to Jerusalem, and, and, um, and, and you can read the story. Jesus, they found Jesus in the temple, and he was discussing matters of theology with, with the theologians of his day. And it says they took Jesus back to Nazareth, and notice these words. And he, Jesus, went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured all of these things. In her heart. What an unbelievable act of humility. Jesus, the Son of God, submitted himself to his earthly parents that he himself had created. Here's another verse, John 19, 26. So here's what's taking place. Jesus is on the cross. He's sacrificing his life for us. And while he is on the cross, he is fulfilling his family obligations. John 19, 26, when Jesus on the cross saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to Mary, woman, behold your son. And he looks to John, the, John and he says, behold your mother. Even before he gave his life in, as a ransom for our sins, what's he doing? He's fulfilling his family obligations. Jesus perfectly obeyed this command. Let me give you the the fifth thing, and here's where I want to just park for just a few minutes. The fifth commandment is perfectly illustrated by the divine relationship between God the Father and Jesus the Son. I, I made that point to the boys and girls just a few moments ago, that Jesus not only perfectly obeyed his earthly parents, but we see that Jesus perfectly obeyed and was submissive to his heavenly father. Deep theological stuff here. Let me just mention it very quickly. It might spur a thought in your mind and heart. If it does, I'd love to have the conversation with you later. But notice just a couple of points under there. As the eternal son, Jesus was equal to the father in essence, but he was submissive to the father in mission. As the eternal son, he is equal to the father in essence, but he was submissive to the father in mission. Let me show you a couple of verses that that perfectly bring that out. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7. 
Paul says this, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God. The word form there comes from the word that literally means the very essence of God. Though he had within his being, Jesus, the very essence of God. He didn't count equality with God as something to be grasped by that. I mean, it wasn't something, equality with God wasn't something that was slipping outside of his fingers. He knew who he was. He was God, almighty God, all-powerful God, omniscient God, all-knowing God. He knew who he was in essence. In essence, he was completely equal with the Father. He did not view as, uh, the form of God as, as something to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant and was born in the likeness of men. So here is Jesus, God incarnate, the eternal son, equal to the father in essence, but submissive to the father in mission. Deep stuff. Let me give you a second thought along those lines. As the eternal son, Jesus continually fulfilled his father's will. Jesus wasn't a renegade out on his own mission. As a matter of fact, he he, he said over and over and over again, I came not to do my own will, but I came to do the will of him who sent me. Me. Let me show you a couple of verses, John chapter 5 and verse 19. So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of his own accord, but only do- does what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, that the son does likewise. John 6, 37 and 38, all that the father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never cast out, for I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. I paused for a second and I wrote in my notes, I wrote, can I say that? Can you say that? Can you say today that you are committed to doing the Father's will? Above all else, the most important thing in your life is is to be obedient to your heavenly father. Let let me just pause for a second and ask you this question. What does God want you to do right now that you are not doing? What, What is that part of your life that the Holy Spirit is constantly pointing out? And for one reason or another, you're a little rebellious. You're reticent to do it. You're not willing to do it. John chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. So Jesus said to them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then will you know that I am he, that I do nothing of my own authority, but speak just as the Father has taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. (laughs) These kids were so theological this morning. I asked one of them, what does it mean to honor your parents? And and one of them said, it means to please them. Jesus said, I always do that which pleases my Father. Man, this is a great self-examination moment. What is it that your heavenly Father wants you to do that you are not Would you pause and listen to him for a moment? The last truth is this. As the eternal son, Jesus' death on the cross was his ultimate act of obedience. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8. And being found in human form, Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. And you and I ought to pause right there and we ought to shout out a hearty Amen. Because because of the obedience of Jesus Christ, salvation is available to you and to me. So Moses looks at the Israelites and he says this, honor your father and your mother. When you and I honor our parents, 
we follow the example of Jesus Christ and we live out the truth of the gospel in our family and in our community. Why in the world do you let your dad treat you that way? Why in the world do you love him or her when they don't love you? What a great opportunity to live out the truth of the gospel. I love them because I have a heavenly father who loves me and cares for me and takes care of me even when I don't deserve it. And my goal is to be like Jesus. I was a kid, we had this little song that we sang, whether I can remember the words, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, my desire to be like him. You see, we fulfill these commandments not because they're easy, not because we can, but we follow a Savior who is obedient to them. And through his power, you and I can do, can fulfill that which is impossible for us.